Hey guys, gals and legionnaires, Rykon here. Welcome to Noah's Tale. This is our let's play of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, version 0.c, Cooper. So, we're in game, and for some of you who haven't played this before, there's a whole heap of information here that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So, we're just going to start going through some of those basics, and... For some of you who have played before, you'll see that there is a number, a large number, of zombies who are outside. Now, I've zoomed out. You can do that quite easily with Z. You can go quite far out as well, which can be handy when you're driving or doing other things. Um, we're going to start by having a look at Noah and what Noah has on her at the moment. So we're going to go into our inventory with I, and we can see what she's got on her at the moment. So she's carrying a gun, a USP-45. So we can see under here, um, it won't have damage because the damage is attributed to the actual ammunition itself. But you can see that there's a whole range of information here. And it can seem overwhelming. There is a ton. Um, but, you know, there is only so much of it that you actually need to know. Um, a lot of it is just, you know, extra information that they like to chuck in there. While we're here, though, while we've got this open... I'm going to go and hit equal, which is reassign. And we're going to reassign uh, USP to G, G for gun. So I can find it really nice and easily within our inventory here. As you'll see, we also have on us over here, if I can jump across the other side, we have a holster, which is already H, which is great. But just to make sure it stays as H, I'm going to make that H here as well. So I can activate that with the letter A. And I can holster my gun, so it can be quite good. Then it kind of gets rid of the any kind of um, weight that your gun is giving you down. Because at the top here we've got volume and we've got weight. So we don't have a backpack or anything like that. We're wearing army pants. And that's pretty much where all of the storage is coming from. These are things that Noah is keeping in her pockets at the moment. Now if we can increase our storage capacity by, say, getting a jumper that has pockets in it, or even grabbing a backpack which is kind of the godsend, the sooner you find a backpack, the better, the more you can carry. So by us holstering our gun means that we can carry other things as well. And you always have your hands as well, which is kind of, um, you'll see whatever in your hands up here, whatever you're wielding. So if something's really heavy, you can just carry it up there. Um, you also see, you, we can see what everything else that Noah has on her at the moment, basic kind of underwear, army pants, socks, a deputy badge, and a sheriff search. So, I'm guessing that Noah was a deputy. Um, we're going to try and hold on to that shirt as much as possible, for as long as possible. Because um, this is the only time in game that we see it. And she's also wearing a pair of boots. The boots you can activate as well, funnily enough, to store knives or other things that you might be able to fit into there. So that's a, that's a handy storage place if you need them. But we're not going to be using them very much, so we're not going to worry about... Um, attributing them to a button. Okay, so that's going to do us for the inventory side of things. Now, there is a whole heap of other things you can see up here. These are our stats, which we've seen when we were creating Noah before. Over here we have sound, and that's going to tell us how much sound we're making. So even if I take a step, which I won't quite yet, um, you'll see the letter 2. Because um, Although I do have a light step, so I might make even less noise than that, which could be good. Um, but looking over here, we have a number of zombies. These show up here. This is a basic kind of idea of where things are coming from. So north is the top of your screen, south is the bottom. You've also got your east and west. So just by looking at here, we can see to our southwest, we have a zombie. I'm guessing that's quite far down to the southwest. Yeah, so that's just down all the way down there. Um, to our south, we should have others there. But um, quite often, this refers to things that are outside of your field of view. So all these things down here, these are things that are within our field of view. But because outside of this little box here, we can't see these things, they show up here. Now, we're just going to go through some of these one by one, just have a look at some of the descriptions. So first up, we've got a zombie cot. A human body, covered by a weather-beaten and badly damaged set of riot gear. So zombie cops can be quite hard to bring down sometimes because they're already protected. They're wearing riot gear. Um, so that can be quite dangerous. And so this is probably one of Noah's um, friends or even colleagues. So it's going to be quite the sight to see that stumbling towards her. Um, we've also got a regular zombie over here. This is what most of the enemies in the game 
are kind of based off here. So we have a human body swaying as it moves. An unstoppable rage is visible in its oily black eyes. So we've got a few of those flicking around here. We also have a swimmer zombie. A slick, glistening human body. Its hand and feet are webbed. It's clad in swimwear. So these are people that um, died either in swimming pools or... You know what? I've never really fully understood the swimmer zombie. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Now some of these are further outside of our view. And they can be quite hard to see. But we will be able to see those. So we're going to hit shift X. Which is going to allow us to see... Not shift X, I lied. It's just regular X. Um, so there we can move and we can see down here we've got the edge of Noah's view. So she can't see past that point. Um, and you can also see that we have this cone of vision as well. And that's because that's what Noah can see looking out of this window. So there could be a whole heap of things here that she can't see. Which I kind of really enjoy about this game. You know, your vision is really based off, you know, your cone of vision. What you can actually see with your eyeballs. Um, which is great. But we're going to go down here. We can have a look at some of these other enemies. So over here we've got a fat zombie. Stumbling as it moves, this corpse of an overweight human regards its surroundings with an empty black gaze. And we've also got two others down here as well that we're going to have a look at. Here we have a zombie necromancer. Great. A twisted mockery of the human form emaciated with jet black skin and glowing red eyes it is somehow painful to look at awakening fears deep within your psyche even the air surrounds it it seems you know what i don't know how to view the rest of that information i think i can hit enter on it nope um you know i'm i'm really not sure i know there is a way but i've forgotten it unfortunately um so yeah, unfortunately that's all that we can see on him at the moment. Um, but we've also got a skeleton over here as well. With its skin so tight, the cracked bones are visible beneath it. Covered in scar tissue and coils of scabbed black liquid, and with eyes so deeply sunken into its skull they are barely visible. Skeletons can be quite hard to kill, especially if you're using ranged weapons. So if I was to use Noah's gun, there's a high chance that the bullets would just pass through it, because it really is... It's that much of a skeleton. It's only just kind of holding together with its skin. Um, whereas it would be easier to take down a zombie. The skeleton, yeah, ranged, it can be quite difficult. But they're also quite brittle in that way as well. So if you do have a bashing weapon, you can smack the crap out of them. And, and kind of deal with them that way. The zombie necromancer might be a problem. As we see here, it says, Awakening deep fears within your psyche. If I go to, I believe, V... We can see our morale. Nothing's affecting our morale at the moment, but here is a whole range of things that can affect your psyche and kind of put you off your game. So we hope that we won't have to deal with that zombie necromancer. Um, right, so next up, we're going to have a look at Noah herself. So to do that, we're going to hit the at symbol. There we go. Um, and we can see a whole range of stats and statistics and all kinds of things. We can see all of her skills down here. We can see all of her traits. We can also see that she's listed as being a police officer. So that can come in handy later in the game sometimes. I don't know if it has any effect on NBC conversation, but it might. There are, there are certain events that can happen in the game where that can be handy. Um, especially even with dealing with some enemies as well, because some of them will recognize you as a police officer and leave you alone. So that can definitely that can definitely be of help. Um, up here we can see encumbrance. So your encumbrance is is how encumbered you are, and we can also see our warmth as well, which is all zero at the moment. I think that's probably because I haven't moved. Um, so it's snowing outside at the moment, so it's really cold. So actually we we don't want to be outside wearing what we're wearing because we're just wearing our sheriff shirt and in our army pants. Um, so we don't have much more than that at the moment. So. You know, the the less time we spend outside, the better. We can also see some basic information about Noah, saying that she's female, she's a cop, and any other additional titles that come in time, they'll be listed up there as well. Um, under here, you can see any things that are affecting you, um, and up here as well, if you're in pain, it affects your movement. And we can see that we're being affected by our quick status, so we're getting plus 10 to our speed, and your speed up here 
isn't just how fast you can run. That's how many actions per turn you can take. Um, so it can just that extra 10% can make a big difference sometimes. But I think we've talked a, a bit too much about the actual background of the game. We're going to dive into the actual game here now. <sighs> so, in terms of starts, this isn't a terrible start, but we've started with zombies in clear sight. So Noah's probably gone to the station and has been awaiting that last transportation to come and pick her up, but it hasn't come. And now she's realized that she's going to have to go out there on her own and, um, and start to make her way into this world. So, that means it's going to be that for us too. At the moment, we're just wielding our fists. I don't know what else is in the rest of this building, so I'm going to tell Noah to wield with W and then G her gun. <clears throat> now, at the moment, you can see over here there's a zero. That means that it is, um, there's no there's no guns in the chambers. And we can also see that we can actually see a little gun there as well, which is quite cool. You can see a little bit easier what people are wearing, which is which is this um, chest hole, paper doll type effect that I was talking about before, which I really haven't seen in any other Cataclysm tile set yet, so really happy to see that, actually. Um, we're going to have a look and see how much ammunition we've got. We've got 50 rounds of 45 ACP, which is your kind of standard um, police ammunition in this game. Um, we're... We're going to try not fire our gun, if we can. Um, first thing I'm going to try and do is see if I can hit C and close. Okay, so down the bottom there you see it says you cannot close the window. I was hoping there might be curtains, but there isn't any. Um, there's a deputy badge over here. I did that by just hitting E and then the direction that you want to look in. Quite, you can use the standard arrow keys to move around, but I find that the numpad's easier because you've got all the range of movement in here, even 7, 9, 1, and 3. They're going to move you diagonally, so they can be quite important. Five in the center, that's your pause button. So if you want to wait a turn in a position, you can. Um, usually I don't take this much time to think about the first turn here, but we just want to be very, very careful with how we go about this. We could go further into the police station, which I'm probably going to do. So down the bottom here you can see that it said that we've spotted a zombie and safe mode is on so that can be quite handy to have safe mode it means that if you open a door it's instantly going to kind of pause you and stop you from moving we're going to hit exclamation mark and that's going to turn safe mode off okay so we're going to start rocking into this building now okay mobile meth lab okay so <laughs> so it's telling us things that are happening around us as well so this um, this down here, which I thought was Navi, is actually a mobile meth lab, so it seems that Walter has found his way even into this game. <laughs> um, you can also see that once I moved, we could see something up here. Now, these, these are sounds. Um, now, new in Cooper is you can actually see what the sound is. Um, so it tells you down here, but it's quite good to be able to actually tell what they are over here as well. So it's saying that we're hearing a blam. So if I had to guess that, blam, it's a gun. So there's someone in this other room here that has a gun. They could be friend or they could be foe. With them being the police station, I'm going to imagine that they probably are a police officer as well, whether there's a high chance they're not. And if they are firing their weapon, it means that there are zombies here already, which is bad for us. Something we haven't done yet is hit M, which will bring up our map. Okay, right. So up here right away, we can see... <laughs> Jenny Moser. Jenny Moser is going to be the NPC that's in the building that we're in. Now, this all looked quite confusing starting off here, but it's not as bad as you might think. So that little at symbol there, that's us. These Zs that we can see around here, those, those mark a zombie hordes. So, um, <laughs> yeah. It's a bit unfortunate. Um, but this is a nice small little town that Noah is from. Um, you can kind of see how far it stretches. Um, out here on the edge of town, there is what seems to be a rather large mega store. So that could be quite good for us to go and loot eventually. And um, we've also got a school over here, which will be terrifying. It'll be full of zombie school children. So we're going to want to avoid that much as, as much as possible. Um, but as you can see, we're kind of straight in the center of town at the moment. Right next to us is a gun store, which is fantastic, but unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do anything with that yet. The gun stores are quite hard to break into, um, so I don't think we will be breaking into there anytime soon. Um, these little 
green are these these are houses you're going to find houses absolutely everywhere um and there are a number of other things in the town as well which could be quite helpful to us but i think what we're probably going to end up doing is maybe hitting up one house maybe two houses and then getting the hell out of there um we've got a few other things over here we've got a radio station i think a public works yeah public works can be quite good to hold up in so we might look at that as an option as it is a decent way out of town but there's this place here the evacuation shelter this is usually where you start the game and it's a good place to start because it's outside of town we've got a forest here on either side as well so that'll help block some of the view if we come running down here so what we might end up doing is looting these first few houses here and here and then either taking a big arc out that way or trying to run down here into the forest lose some of the zombies in the forest and head up to the evacuation shelter but it's all very, very, very optimistic, and I don't know whether or not we'll be able to achieve that. As I've said before, um, this game is extraordinarily punishing, so we can expect to die. And when Noah does die, that will be the end of the series, unfortunately. So we've survived so far, and that's a good start. We're just going to hope it continues that way. So there is this other person in the other room. I think it's time that we go and introduce ourselves and hope to God that they are friendly okay we've opened the door we can now close that behind us there's a computer off to the side here and that's going to open up the door to this evidence room there are guns and other things in there but unfortunately Noah even though she is a police officer doesn't know the password she didn't deal in evidence so she's not going to be able to get into there which is a bit of a pain oh dear okay so we have our first encounter a zombie cop and it's also probably someone that, that no one knows um, there's also a skeletal dog out there too so this is this is this is a really tough start for Noah because she's skilled with weapons um, in terms of handguns but beyond that she doesn't really have any other skills I'm gonna close that door we're gonna reload we should have done that already I'm gonna hit ignore as it's telling us there's a zombie backing banging on the door outside there we can actually see that the gun's reloaded I'm opening the door I hit F to fire you can see here you have confidence and steadiness you can increase your steadiness by just waiting a second or two I'm gonna do that I'm gonna hit period to steady my aim okay luckily he didn't get any closer to us you got a few options here you can be careful and take time to aim and fire or you can take precise aim it's hard to tell how long it's going to take the zombie cop to get to us so I'm gonna go in between I'm gonna be careful I'm gonna take a careful amount of time to aim and fire okay so we did our first damage of the game which is great you can see we've got 11 rounds left in our 45 USP so it was a good hit we hit the zombie cop for 30 damage great now we're going to get ready to fire again you can see that steadiness has gone right down because of recoil so we now need to wait and in this time that zombie cop might just come for us okay there he is and you saw that spray there those were those were bullets so there is someone firing outside there I'm gonna try and move back okay right we've got a little bit more steadiness now because we've moved um, we have had time to kind of get the gun back okay good we managed to get full steadiness we're going to take careful aim bam great we hit the zombie cop for 39 damage the zombie cop dies now usually that would be the end of it you've killed the enemy but these are zombies and they come back if you leave this corpse alone for six hours it will come back to life um it's quite cool I didn't realize we could so easily see what he's got on him as well so this this is a pretty much a godsend he's got a, a backpack on oh, actually no sorry it's a she she has a backpack on her which is great even that light jacket as well which fits us also fitting clothes are really important as if you're wearing something that's unfitting it's going to be more encumbering for you um so we're gonna we're gonna take those right away oh god <clears throat> okay so this thing here is a shocker zombie a human body with pale blue flesh with crackling electrical energy 
crackling with electrical energy. This is essentially a zombie that has um, bionics that have gone wrong. So bionics are they're modifications that you make to your body in this game. This game, I should have said earlier, is set around about 2050. So it's set a decent way in the future. There, there are a few kind of futuristic type things in this game. Um, mutagens, which mutate your body, and bionics as well, which um, can enhance your body in a number of different ways. And a lot of people in this game have bionics. Um, as they don't seem to have been overly expensive in the world before. I mean, some of them are very, very expensive, but some of them are just kind of like more mundane. Um, this shocker zombie here, this this is someone that's had bionics in their bodies while they've died. And they can be a real pain in the ass because they can shoot these kind of beams of electricity out. Well, not so much beams, it's like clouds of electricity. And they stun you almost like a, almost like an electric eel. So they can be a, they can be a real problem for us. Um, dealing with one of them so early on can be really, really difficult. Probably what our best strategy here is going to be to run. But we can see by this little footstep sign down there. That means that there is a zombie in here already. And I don't think there's any way out that way. So, I think our best shot is going to be to try and grab this backpack really quickly. Jump behind this door. We won't be able to close this door because his body is in the way. The body of the of the other female cop. Um, so, we're going to dive behind here really quick. Excellent. Oh, okay. So outside is Jenny Moser. I really want to try and help her out here. I have no idea how injured she is, um, but she's wearing a pair of boots. She's got pants, a dress shirt, a lab coat, a pair of medical gloves, a, dis a dust mask, and a baseball cap. And she's wielding a 9mm USP. So she has a chance to kill this thing. Um, whether she does... Yeah... yeah. Those things are quite hard to bring down. I don't think she's going to bring it down very easily. Um, but we're not going to worry about that right now. What we're going to worry about is getting this light jacket and this backpack. Also, this cash card is going to be really helpful for us as well. So we're going to grab that. And as I was saying before, we're going to wear that. And as you can see, it takes time to wear things and all other kinds of things are happening around you. Um, if you just leave these alone, they will come back to life in the six hours. So usually you either smash them with S, but be careful what you're smashing them with, as it will do damage to that. Um, instead, it's sometimes better to butch them, but we don't actually have a knife at the moment, so we wouldn't be able to butch them either. But I don't plan on coming back to this police station anytime soon, even though it is, you know, it's, it's, it's where we know it's from. We're going to leave it. Okay, so we're going to go into here now. We're going to go to our backpack. And we are going to go to where. So that's so cool. You can actually see a little backpack go on at the end, which is wicked. Um, that's really new for me. <laughs> but I really enjoy that. And I didn't see where she went. Where Jenna went. So we're going to have to wait and see. Um, right, this, this jacket's a little bit damaged, but it's not too bad. Now if I go... Let me see. If I go at, we can now see... Uh, our temperatures, which we couldn't see before. So our mouth is cold. We need to find something to put over our mouth, like a, um, preferably something like a uh, scarf would be fantastic. Over here we can see our encumbrance is 10. 10's not bad. Um, from what I understand, the old system they used to play on, um, you'd have encumbrance in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, from what I understand, it's gone times 10 now. So essentially what this means is that we have one encumbrance from us from what I can understand. So that's not too bad. We're gonna we should be okay with that. Now, I know all this crazy stuff's going on outside at the moment, but we should probably hit plus now. And we're gonna have a look at our layering to see what things are layered as. Um this is pretty much overall it's showing you everything that you're wearing. But we're gonna wanna go through stage by stage here. And at the moment it seems to be good. We've got our bra, share a shirt, light jacket and the backpack on the outside, which is good. Um, we're just going to check everything else. Should be fine. Yep, that's great. The holster on the outside. Great, because um, sometimes um, weird things can happen and you'll end up wearing your socks on the outside of your boots, which is a bit weird. And it changes um, how encumbered you are, as you might understand. That can be quite, <laughs> quite encumbering. Um, we're going to do something a little bit advanced here. I have shot a shot. We can see that there is a 45 casing on the ground here. I'm going to set up an auto pickup rule because I want to pick up those shells. 
I think that we're going to be able to use them eventually. There's also, I think, 9mm casings out here as well. I'm going to see if I can grab those. Casings, from what I understand, don't seem to have much in the way of volume or weight to them. It's zero and zero. I don't know if that's going to add up over time, but we'll see. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit question mark, and we're going to go three, which brings us to this auto pickup manager. You can see that I already have some in here as well. At the moment, I've got it um, set to pick up arrows. Anything that has the word arrow in it, it's going to pick up. We're now going to go add, and we're going to create a new rule. This um, star is a wild card, so that means that anything before it is fine. And I'm going to do the same thing for after it. So we're going to go for casing, like that. Now if I hit test, it'll show us what we're going to pick up. We're going to pick up pretty much all ammo casing, which is good. I'm okay with that right now. So now we can see that it is white, it's not grayed out, so it's active. We're going to save that. And that means that if we walk over that, we're going to pick it up automatically and it can just save a ton of time. Now I don't know what's happening with that outside, so instead of just walking straight out there, we're going to peek. I think we can do this around the door. So if we hit Shift X and then move to the side, we can see what's out there. Um, I can't actually see... I can't see that shocker zombie at the moment. It might have told us down here what happened. Jenny is reloading their 9mm. Okay, so if we exit, we zip back to where we were. So peeking is really important. Um, things generally don't see you when you peek. Sometimes they do. Um, it can be really good when you're dealing with turrets. Really, really, really good. It looks like that shocker zombie is down, which is awesome. So we're going to take a step outside. I'm going to quickly see what these have on them. So this is the shocker zombie here. I would really want to butcher this guy. If we butcher him, we can find um, CBMs, which are your bionics. You can find those in there. Um, and I tell you, some of them can be absolutely brilliant. Others, not so much, but, you know, we'll just have to see. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything with it at the moment, which is unfortunate. Um, so we're probably going to have to leave him be. I'm just going to have a quick look over here. So this zombie just has a sundress on them. It's not super helpful. Um, I'm going to try and talk to Jenny now. There's a chance that she might be hostile. But um, Noah's going to try her best to talk to her. Jenny says, at least we've got shelter. Okay, so this is good. This means that Jenny has actually kind of started with Noah in a way. They're, they're, they're not enemies, which is great. So I'm going to ask her, what should we do now? I suppose getting our car up and running would be really useful if we have to despair quickly from here. Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. It would be nice to have a car. I'm going to ask her if she wants to travel with us. Okay, why should I travel with you? Hmm. Damn, I kind of wish I didn't do that, and I can't go back yet. I'm going to say we're friends, aren't we? There's a 41% chance it might work. Damn it. Okay, it didn't work. I'm going to ask her now, which I probably should have done before, can I do anything for you? Um, Jenny says, I have just one job for you. want to hear about it. Tell me about it. I've lost so many friends. Please find me a patient list from the regional hospital or doctor's office. I just want to know who might still be out there. We're going to do it. Okay, so this is our first quest that we've got from NPC. Now, I've never been able to keep an NPC alive for long enough to actually return a quest. Um, so essentially she's asking us to try and find a hospital or a doctor's office to find um, their notes to see if we can find who's still alive. Um, it's going to help bring her closure. Um, so we're just going to ask her for advice. She's going to tell us to go to the hospital. I'm going to say, good, thanks. Does he have any more jobs for us? I'm going to try and see if we can ask her again to travel with us. I don't think we can. Oh, no, we can. Uh, we asked her again recently. Okay, so there's a good chance that she's just going to get herself killed here. Um, it's nothing to do with her. It's just going and shooting a gun around town is generally not good. Now, we'd be able to pick up a few things from her if she did die, which is grim, but it's just part of the game, unfortunately. Um, something that we got to be aware of. Jenny probably isn't going to make it here. We could try and help as much as possible to fight off these, but if we have a look at our map, there aren't any zombies. Oh, there they are. <laughs> there are plenty of hordes of zombies all around here. So, 
I'm going to stick to my original goal. We're going to hit up some of these places. There's a grocery store up there, which means there probably is grocery carts. Um, we want to grab one of those really quick before maybe we go and hit up this house. Um, it's grim, but I'm going to try and use Jenny as a distraction here. Um, she's going to be going around shooting her gun. I'm going to let her do that. We are going to get out of here. So I'm going to pick up these shells while I can. We're going to keep moving. Now looking out here, I can see smoke and acid. So that means that there is a spitter zombie and a smoker zombie there at the moment, which is not great. Not great at all. There's part of me that just wants to follow Jenny. Um, because she probably actually has a decent amount of ammunition. So we're going to do that for a little bit. Okay. I am actually playing on experimental mode. So there can sometimes be a few bugs. Um, so if anything like that does happen, we just hit spacebar. And we get through it. Um, we can see that there's a zombie close to us. I'm going to try not to worry about it. That skeletal dog is probably the thing that I'm most worried about. Um, I'm going to quickly see if I can peek around the corner. There are a lot of zombies that way. Okay. So we're not going to want to go that way. Even though it is dangerous, we're probably going to want to end up going this way instead. I really hope that it's not a great big mistake that I'm making here. It's a great big mistake that I'm making here. Wow. There are a lot of zombies out here. A lot. A huge amount, in fact. Um, yeah. That there is a spitter zombie, a hunched human body with its eyes pushed up into its forehead and its drooping cheeks. Most of its face is occupied by a puckered mouth. The stomach is swollen. So this thing spits acid at you. It's all kinds of bad news. We really don't want to be dealing with it. Um, but in other news, um, Jenny is still doing really good here, so keep that up, Jenny. This here is a shrub. It can be the death of you. If we look really carefully, it says movement cost 400 in this little box here. It's going to disappear when I move away from it. When you're moving on a normal tile, it only costs 100 points of movement to move. So moving across these can be really bad. It's also the kind of place that you want to fight these guys. See this table as well? It costs 200 movement points. So when you're moving over these things, you're going to be slowed down. So when I move over that, things are going to move a lot further as well. He is going to be a problem. We want to try and run past him here. I don't actually want to go into, what is this, this is a coffee shop. I don't want to go into it. I'm just trying to avoid them as much as I can. I might just want to try and run past him. I think I'm going to try and do that. Okay, so luckily he hasn't hit us. We'll have another chance to hit us here. Good, we made it. That's awesome. Okay, so we're going to continue on up here. Jenny is fighting the best that she can. She just took down a firefighter zombie as well. I mean, this is this is hard here. I want to be able to try and help, but I just don't think that we can. We need to we need to think about ourselves here. Unfortunately, it's snowing outside. Um, there's just all kinds of danger and all kinds of things that are trying to eat us. So we are going to want to just get the hell out. Okay, so looking up this way, things are pretty bad here as well. We've got all kinds of zombies. So we're going to want to stick to that original plan. I believe if we head along this road, we're going to be able to make it to this grocery center. And then from there, you know what? I think we're going to need to get out. What else do we have around? I want to have a quick look. A library and a bankrupt pizzeria. That's not good. So, Five Nights at Freddy's. It's happening just across the road from us. <laughs> Great. There's two grocery stores, which is actually really good, but that stuff's going to rot quite quickly. Um, I'd like to come into this house that's across the road. Um, I really would. If we can, it would be awesome. Um, just because there are basics that we need to get, that we really need to get. Um, I'm going to talk about some of these other zombies that are here really quickly. So, this is a tough zombie, once an athletic human, now a brutal monster. Its facial features are twisted into an expression of pure rage. These guys are bad news. Um, they're tough, uh, as it says. Um, they take, I mean, at the very start of the game, they're, you know, they're bad news. Um, they can take a bit of a beating, like a, a decent amount of a beating. Um, and they hand it out as well. Over here, we've got a decayed zombie. These guys are a little bit easier to take down, and they're not as fast. A once dead human corpse. Its discolored, swollen flesh is riddled with festering wounds and open sores. This guy here. 
They grab a zombie, a deformed human once living. Its arms dangle from its sides like the limbs of some skinless ape, mindlessly groping at their surroundings. These guys, as it says, grab you, um, and they make it very, very hard to get away. Again, bad news. And these guys down here are zombie masters, once human. Its features have tightened, its lips pulled back into an unnatural grin, revealing rows of blackened teeth beneath its large, piercing eyes. To be honest, I really don't know what's going on with the Zombie Masters. They're relatively new for me, I've seen them a few times, but nothing too crazy has happened with them yet. I'm going to leave them be. I'm going to leave them be, I'm going to try and make it up to this house. Try being the key word here. Now, thankfully, because of our slower zombies, we are able to run through most of this, which is really a massive, massive help to us. I can't express enough with the wander spawned on how important it is to have something like that. Great, there's a child zombie in there. Okay. Now, when she's moving through this window here, she's going to be slowed down. So it's going to give us a chance to take a good shot. Okay, so we got a headshot, did 92 damage. And here, you can see we feel guilty for killing the child zombie. So if we have a look at our moral, if we have a look at our morale again, um, under here, we can see we've got minus five, so we feel guilty about killing this child. Um, as, you know, too right you should. Um, we're going to jump through this window now. I'm going to quickly see what she had on her. She had cargo pants that don't... Oh, what? Okay. <laughs> this is a great child zombie. She was currently... She was carrying with her a military rucksack. We're going to grab that and we're going to drop our backpack. But first we're going to move through that windowsill because that's just as bad as moving through a bush. Okay, so we're going to drop that backpack and we're going to wear that military rucksack. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit I. And we're going to have, we're going to have a look at those two different things. So we've got the backpack on the ground there. And then if I go down to here... We've got the military rucksack. So we can actually compare the two items. So we can see that it it has a lot more volume, or it takes up more volume because it, it it's more heavy. But we don't have to worry about volume because we're wearing it. Um, but we can see that an encumberment is 25. So this is gonna this is gonna give us 2.5 points of encumberments. Um yeah, we're gonna have to see how that goes. But we're primarily gonna be a ranged character, so it shouldn't be too bad for us. But we can see that it's got double the storage that the backpack did. So at the very start of the game, it's gonna be really important for us to have that. So we can see that it actually has 25 encumberment at the moment. How that affects us in terms of melee, well, we don't actually have a melee weapon at the moment, so it's not it's not too much of a concern for us. Now that we're inside this house, if I hit C, I can close the curtain, which ain't a hell of a lot of good now. They know I'm in here. Um, but we're going to hit V, actually shift V, and we can see everything that's in here. Um, looking around the room, there's a ukulele, okay. Um, there's some gasoline on the floor over there. Um, but there's also a pair of sunglasses, which we're actually going to grab and we're going to wear at the moment. Um, because even though it's not sunny outside, it will be sunny eventually. Um, there's a suit in here that fits. Uh, we're not going to worry about that. That's so cool. You can actually see the sunglasses on here now. I'm not going to get over that. <laughs> right, so there's a whole heap of things in this room here. A sewing kit, brilliant. And we're going to grab the chowder too. Don't have to worry about utensils right now. I'm going to grab that string. I'm going to grab pretty much as much as we can. Super glue, that's really helpful. Mayonnaise, uh, it's going to go off really fast. We're going to grab this forest honey, however. Which is going to be great. We are going to grab the mayonnaise because we ain't going to say no to anything at this stage. Um, this here is junk food. So we can't we can't eat it. <laughs> it's going to take me a little while to get used to that. Same with the fast noodles. I'm pretty sure are also junk food. Dust mask we're going to grab and wear right away. We're also going to grab this pot. It's going to take up quite a bit of space, but we're going to need it for cooking later on. So we're now wearing that dusk mask, and it actually shows up here as well. Damn, that's awesome. Okay, so we're going to grab the great drink. We're going to grab that, and I don't think... Again, I think this is junk food. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually say. It would be great if it did have a category of sorts, but, you know, we're just going to use our common sense. Hydrogen per peroxide. I don't think we're going to need this right now. Uh, we don't really need the glass bottle yet either. Um... Yeah, we've got a cookbook over here. 
Um, it's volumes four. It's a bit much for us at the moment. We don't really need it. I'm going to grab the raw spaghetti. I'm going to double check there wasn't anything there. Raw lasagna, we're going to grab that. It's not junk food. We're going to grab the canned chicken. And the bag of nachos, I guess that's junk food as well. Sugary cereal. Is that junk food? I guess it's junk food as well. I may have doomed myself here. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so there's a basement here. Um, we're going to want to have a look at that right away. I'm going to close this curtain, even though that fat zombie over there has probably seen us. And we're going to head down to this basement. But, unfortunately, that's going to be happening next time, my friends. Thank you for joining me for episode one of Noah's Tale. She survived so far. Uh, it's... It's longer than probably what a lot of people survive in this game. The start is the most dangerous time. It's when you're panicking, there's all kinds of things going on, and it would have been great to be able to help Jenna, eh? but we had to let her go. So, we can hope maybe that we run into her again, but however, I think it's rather unlikely. So thanks again for joining me. Until next time, stay tuned.